Hey everyone, this is Liz here, and I want to share a special guest with you today. So much to learn about him. But first of all, I wanted to share that he is a GM in Texas, and he'll tell us more about that. But his owner was asked to speak at our franchisee conference in October. Was it October? Yes. Seems like so far away. And in October, the owner of this location said, you know, I could speak, but he said, there's somebody else that I feel like would benefit the franchisees more if they spoke. And he recommended you. And it was so awesome to hear you and hear a tiny bit of your story. And you shared about your location and what you were doing now. So this is Joe and I'll let him tell you who he is, where he's from, and then we'll get into a little bit of the Augusta stuff later. But can you tell us a little about your childhood and your life, kind of what makes you the person you are today? All right. Uh, I'll start with where I'm at now and then go back. So currently I'm the general manager for Augusta Corpus Christi. Uh, took on the role once we expanded the location, opened up a physical shop in January. Uh, was with Augusta about a year and a half before that. Uh, I was a landscaping crew doing our projects, everything from grading sod, flower beds, flagstones, pavers. Uh, went and got licensed irrigation, <clears throat> became our licensed irrigator. State of Texas requires that in order to uh, sell, design, and install irrigation systems. Uh, and then I became our estimator. Ryan handed over that role. Uh, that was a pretty, pretty big deal to me because I mean, estimates are kind of what drives everything. If you're not, you're not winning jobs, the guys have nothing to go do. True. So I uh, took that on and then became a general manager. So going back, uh, my dad was Navy. So I was born in South Carolina. And then when I was little, we moved for probably like three. We moved to Japan. I was over there until the beginning of my third grade year. That's when I came back to South Carolina. Uh, we spent a few years there until the middle of my eighth grade year. I haven't done the math, but I think I went to like 11 schools growing up. Oh, my. Yeah, it was fun. I was like, hey, I'm the new kid. How you doing? Got really used to that one. Uh, then moved to Corpus Christi where my dad retired. I joined the Marine Corps in 2001, January. Uh, my mom was pretty excited about that. She thought that was great. She wasn't so excited about it after September 11th. No kidding. Yeah. She was like, oh, okay. This changed. She's like, I thought you were just going to get college money. Now you're going to do actual military stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I wound up doing that for 13 years, deployed four times, twice to Iraq, twice to Afghanistan. Um, I was in the first push over into Afghanistan in 2001. Uh, then wow. I go back again in 04. So I got to see the changes. Mm -hmm. from when we first put boots on the ground to when we started establishing uh, forward operating bases, everything like that. So let's unback that just a tad. Uh, why was your mom so supportive? Were you being sarcastic or were you, was she okay with the whole lifestyle and the life she had lived with your dad in the Navy? Yeah, she was totally fine with it. She was really happy about it. Uh, Amazing. She just I mean, knew what was available, you know, the GI Bill, the, the health care, all that that my dad had. So she was happy that I was able to get that. They wouldn't have to pay for college. That was a plus. Yeah, no kidding. So. And how many how many times did you actually move in your lifetime? From city to city, it was five times. Wow. So do you think that in part has anything to do with the person you are today? Are you a flexible kind of person? Are you able to pivot and do different things because of that lifestyle you lived? I think it definitely plays a part in it. Um, I had a whole lot of new kid in school moments. So mm -hmm. it's either you're the kid over there with a the little brown lunch bag, not talking to anybody, or you have to get out there and you know, find friends. Definitely. So, and was that hard for you? Like, did you mesh with everybody pretty well? Like approach them yourself? I'd say it's kind of 50 50 at first and became more me leading. Yeah. So how old were you when you came into the military? I was 18. You were 18. Okay. Yeah. I graduated high school in 2000 and then I joined the Marine Corps January, 2001. And how old were you in when nine 11 happened? 
19. So it was soon after, and you had done all your training and were you qualified to go into live action at that point? Yeah, I went to my uh, first duty station right after 9-11. So how did you feel on the day 9-11 happened when you saw the first plane crash and the second? Or did you even see it? Were you aware of what was going on right when it was happening? We were aware of it. Obviously, it's we're everywhere it was. You know, the world stood still and everyone stared at their TVs. It was the same for us. Uh, just we were in Marine Corps uniform and all my senior guys were telling us that uh, everything just changed. Yeah, no kidding. And, and, and so how and how long was it before you guys deployed and went to somewhere else and you were planning on being right then? Did they pivot right away and come up with a new plan for you? Yeah, the unit I was with, we were actually slated to go on, a, they call them a med float, where you get on ships with the Navy, you go over and do training exercises across the, the Mediterranean. Uh, call it a lot of things, med floats, boost cruises. You go see all these little... You know, nice Spain and things like that. You get a visit. Um, so they were excited about that. They were on their little pre-deployment leave, going to see family, take their cars home and whatnot. 9-11 happened. They recalled all of them. Mm. And the uh, ships left port September 12th. Amazing. And where did you guys uh, go from there? Uh, we went right to Afghan. Well, we went to Pakistan first, um, mm -hmm. set up. Uh, little bases over there so where we could resupply. And then we pushed across the border into Afghanistan. Uh, first thing was to take the embassy back in Kabul, mm -hmm. resecure the embassy, uh, put guys there, secure the airfields at Kandahar, everything we needed to take in order to run military operations. Were you one of the, the first road. waves in? Yeah, we were the first wave. We had the 26th mu from the East Coast and the 15th mu from the West Coast. Phenomenal. How long were you there working in the military before you retired? Uh, I was in for 13 years. And then you retired. Uh, did you retire or did you get injured and need to leave? Yeah, I got it medically for my knee. Okay. And how's your knee today? Yeah, it's, it's got its moments. <laughs> I'm sure. And you're in a challenging, very challenging job. So what was it about you that Ryan would think that you were management material? Uh, I don't know. I'd like to say I have a good head on my shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. I've experienced leading. I mean, I, Marine Corps, you can't help but pick up leadership skills. Yeah. It's, ingra sure. it's ingrained in us from day one. Um, I work well with the guys. I communicate well. Also, uh, I could do the field work and also can do the the computer side of it. Mm -hmm. so nice. I can, so yeah, so usually a big separating factor. You can get a great field guy, but the computer skills are non-existent. They don't have an email address half the time. Totally. Yeah. Well, hopefully after COVID, they, they did get themselves an email address. The whole world changed again with COVID and everybody had to order things online. Yeah, that was a... That was an interesting moment. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So he hired you a couple of years ago, was it? Yes. Yeah. So you've been there two years. You were in the field for a year. Is that correct? And then he moved you into a management position. Yeah, a little over a year. And then I was uh, just estimator and irrigation manager for about six months until I got moved into the GM role. Did he pull you into that position because he was opening another location and needed somebody on the team to step up? I think that was the forward, forward plan of it. Okay, it just, so he planned for you to eventually run that location. Yeah, that was something we talked about early on. And did he wait till you were up to speed to actually purchase the next one? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> he was just ready to buy another one, so you were forced to expedite the plan. Yeah, when Ryan gets ready to do something, Ryan does something. So 100%. So what's your relationship like with him? Uh, we have a really good work relationship and a uh, personal relationship. I consider him a, he's an outstanding boss, the best one I've ever had. And uh, I consider him a good friend as well. That's great. And you guys have traveled together. You came to conference and summit together. Uh, what was that like traveling with him? 
and watching him interact with the franchisees and kind of see his position in the franchise. It was interesting. Um, I mean, we look at Ryan the way we do. You know, he gets in there with us. And, but everybody that doesn't see him on a day-to-day -day basis looks at him a little bit different and seeing for that sure. the way they looked at him. You know, a lot of people have a lot of questions for Ryan. Yeah. They want to know, you know, what's the what's the magic? What do you do? How do you make it happen? His yeah. answer is usually like, you know, it's just my guys. I don't know. They just They just get it done. Yeah, so you've seen actually other franchisees come to visit and get – some pointers and just advice from him for their company. And did you get to observe all that and hear some of those conversations? Yes, I did. Yeah. When uh, Jason came out, he rode around with me doing estimates. And uh, I forgot his name now. Out of California. Forrest. Forrest. There we go. Yeah. When Forrest came out, he rode around doing estimates with me as well. Um, saw how we do our morning meetings and talk to guys on Monday. How we get our guys routed, uh, just what a general manager does on a day-to-day -day basis and how they can take that back and streamline mm -hmm. their stuff. Was Corpus the first location that Ryan owned? It was. So where was it in its growth when you came in as general manager? Uh, stage three. Which is the, is it the 500 to 800? 500 to 800. Where we're okay. currently sitting at, we did 604 last year. The goal is to do... Uh, a million this year. Wow. What are your plans and what's your strategy to actually make that goal this year? Uh, well, the main thing is I got to sell jobs. So it's a uh, sell with conviction, get the jobs on the books. I'm fully confident the guys can handle the workload. Um, it's just up to me to schedule it properly. Mm -hmm. Working with the other, everyone else in the office, working with the other GMs. Uh, just leave the guys. Are you still in the field? Um, I do irrigation audits. I go out and mm -hmm. do audits um, and I'll step out in the field if I need to. But for the most part, I'm in the office. We're doing eight estimates a day, follow up calls, meeting with customers. It's, just, it's not plausible to be in the field. Yeah. Um, what I know about your franchise location, which is quite quite different than all others, it's very long. And what is the mileage from one end to the other of your territory? Do you know? Ooh, mileage. Uh, if I went all the way from, we're weird because you go north to north. So yes. it's not like a north to south because we wrap around the bay. Yes. So Cal Allen would be my north side of it. Mm -hmm. But then you cross the br bridge and it wraps around and takes you out to Holiday Beach. And that's interstate speeds. You're looking at a little over an hour drive from one point to the other. Yeah. So how does that affect all your estimates then? Uh, I handle all the estimates in Corpus. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac takes care of the Rockport area on the other side of the bridge. So did you Isaac. split up Corpus to create Rockport? Yeah, Corpus was the first uh, Augusta franchise and then Rockport. And then Rockport had the big shop with the nursery and everything attached to it. Okay. And then Corpus had a small physical location. Okay. So yeah, people wouldn't know that your owner actually has a nursery as well. Is that a big part of affecting all three locations? Well, having a nursery where we can hand pick our own stuff right off of the truck is pretty nice. Oh, sweet. Not, at the, not at the mercy of, uh, you know, we got three here in town. They don't really have much co competition on the other side. There's one that we're slowly taking down, but, uh, <laughs> it's the way it goes. You know, is that because of your high volume that you're getting from the other ones? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, what they else? Just can't keep was, up with us. Are there services that uh, Ryan had before you came on and then you were able to expand some of those services or have you guys back down to more basic services? I don't know. We're, we keep expanding. Yeah. Uh, I definitely was added irrigation in. Mm -hmm. uh, having the license allowed us to, to actually sell that and do the work. So we didn't see a uh, crazy growth in it. Like, uh, a little under 30,000 last year. Phenomenal. Hopefully a lot more this year. Do you have anybody that can do that when you're not around or when you're doing estimates? I have guys that can do the work, but they have to work underneath my license number. I see. So you have to, do you have to be on site? 
I don't have to be on site. I have so, to do the, the sell, the design. I create the design for them, give them okay. the design. They go out and install it to my design. And Sweet. I sign off on the final job. Yeah, that's awesome. So did you have, you had mowing and then is irrigation your upsell or now do people ask for the irrigation and then continue service on with you after you've installed the irrigation? A mix of both. Irrigation is a good upsell. So you get a grading inside and the guy wants to drop you know, know, something crazy, 24 pallets. And you're like, so how are you going to water this? Yes. I was like, uh, you know, you got to put three, four inches of water penetration into the soil. You can do that by hand. 100%. No. They're like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. And it's like, hey, you also do irrigation. I'm a licensed irrigator. But like, how's that going to work? Man. How's that going to work if you already have the sod on site and then you're asking him what he's going to do when you go for the estimate about the yeah, sod? Yeah, I, I do the upsell at the estimate. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. So my brother got your yard torn out so we can throw one in pretty quick for you. That's awesome. And do you give him any kind of discount for going ahead with you instead of someone else? Not really. I'm a big fan of discounts. It's uh, your price is your price and sell your price. Um, it's sell the brand, sell yourself first. Mm -hmm. You sell the brand, you know, you can get a hold of us 24 seven, you know, command center answer from calls after hours. Mm -hmm. uh, we never leave the office out returning the phone call or returning the email. Uh, we actually, you know, we act, we show up, we don't charge our estimates. We answer our phones. Our guys will show up on time. And, you know, we're, we're a brand. we got 10 trucks rolling around with a gust on them. We're not going to disappear overnight. Mm -hmm. So uh, the bigger jobs, I think is it's easier to sell bigger jobs with the Augusta brand than it is smaller jobs. Interesting. So the bigger jobs, I have the comms like, okay, I'm going to let loose on $60,000. Mm -hmm. They don't want the guy pulling up with a, a beat up truck with no branding on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, now the, they know the you're back. They approve it. Yeah, yeah. By the time they approve a job, they've talked to either command center or Jennifer, Brittany in the mm -hmm. office to get my estimate scheduled. They met me in person. I followed up with them. The off, you know, they approve it. The office contacts them and gets it schedule and they're talking to so many people we have mm -hmm. a full office staff for most of the time people show up they look around a yard and then you know, that's it i'm out there i do full measurements take pictures a video load that to a google drive link and send it to them so it's uh we dazzle them i guess with our estimate yeah. process yeah that's awesome uh before you came to ryan did you work in a lawn care company before that i worked for a an individual. He owned uh, multiple properties, flipping houses. So I did all the landscaping side of it for him. Okay. All right. So when you came to him, you already had a few years of experience anyway. Yeah. I had like the basics, flower bed mm -hmm. installation, weed mat, rocks, stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, what was it about you on that interview process? He didn't know you then. He didn't know you had leadership skills or anything. What was it about you then that you think he hired you? Or was he just desperate? Uh, well, he hired me in June, so. Oh, wow. Definitely, definitely needed somebody. I, I got thrown right into the fire. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, and was we, there a good leader before you? Was there a GM? Yeah, Isaac was the GM. Oh, okay. Was, and then he was, he was able taking to care of. Yeah, he was covering the whole area, so. He was already looking for somebody to groom into that position. Mm -hmm. And then I sent my application in and my resume had military on there. So, mm -hmm. and then I was a recruiter for three and a half years. So, Wow. Yep. I see that on my applications and they are the first people on my list that I contact as well and definitely have the conversation with them right up front. I ask them if they know who Jocko is and if they've read Extreme Ownership. Uh, some have never, even in the Navy. So it's not about this. Had you? Had, did you know about that beforehand? Yeah, I'd read his book. I listened to his podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I figure most people in, in the Navy, in the military would have, but I've met several that hadn't and got started, you know, listening and everything once they came to Augusta and met us. But the qualities of those people I can depend on right away. Not always. I know there's people that aren't totally legit and there's bad people in every single occupation as well as the military. 
some of them use that as an excuse that they were, but they actually never did anything and they were horrible employees and I had to let them go. But for the most part, they're all pretty legit. Yeah. And the Marine Corps, we called it that 10% that slips through the cracks. 100%. That's so true. That's so true. I believe that. Uh, so coming up to date, you plan to get to a million this year. You have a plan for that. What's your five-year plan? Five-year plan, uh, definitely build a recurring and be the name in the in town where people, you know, anybody who wants landscaping, lawn maintenance or anything, we've touched so many yards and made so many customers happy that we build off a of word of mouth. They see so many of our trucks running around um, that we're the only answer. That's yeah. the five-year goal is Augusta is the name. Yeah. Wow. And right now, are you guys the name you feel like? Uh, I definitely feel it's, it's becoming that. Mm -hmm. Is that because they have that wow experience from the time they meet you all the way to the time they meet crew to their final invoice? Yeah, I get a lot of word of mouth and a lot of estimates from uh, job sites. So, so the drive by seeing us doing work and you know, they see nice branded trucks, nice trailers, nice equipment, guys in uniform. Mm -hmm. You know, they go up and they'll stop. And then one of the guys will go up and be like, hey, how you doing? You like what we're doing over here? And they're like, yeah, that's good. It's like, hey, we can get your house like this too, man. Hey, here's a business card. So they're really happy. You know, they meet a personable. Yeah. You know, they see Augusta on the shirt. Yeah. So then do, I, they, do you have your team trained up to kind of sell themselves and not wait for you to come? Yeah, I tell them... Uh, all I need them to do is get them, get that card to them and have mm -hmm. them make a phone call. Nice. If I can get in front of the customer, I can do my job. You go, sir. So uh, their cards, what did their business cards say? Uh, team members and then my foreman say project foreman. Nice. And do they have their own names on there? Yes, they do. So if they, they get... Everybody. That's awesome. I bet that really helps their confidence and their commitment to the company as well. Yeah, it does. And anytime we get something, I take a picture of it, you know, like, Hey, this one, appreciate whoever it was got that one. Yeah. Even the mowers get it too. Guys will come up and talk to them to handle a business card. Say, yeah, get the office a call to give you a estimate over the phone to get your lawn taken care of. Did they get some sort of incentive to do that? Yeah. I got oh, Wi-Fi cable. Yeah. So I got these four for right here. Little $20 gift cards. Well, that. And, so they get and, that uh, after a first time cut. Once uh, once we do the first time cut, it's completed an invoice, then they get their twenty dollars gift card, and I hand that out in front of the team. That's great. So, how many team members do you have? How many trucks? Uh, we have four trucks here right now: two mo trucks, single man, and then I have two project trucks. One's a two man, one's a three man. And they all Just have seven. their trucks wrapped, matching. Yeah, our, we have one project truck with a new wrap, and then everything else is wrapped with the original. Nice. So how has your experience been so far and different from other jobs that you've had? Um, Augusta, not to sound cliche, I mean, it kind of, it feels like a family. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I got like all these aunts and uncles and cousins and stuff scattered about the country. Mm -hmm. I guess the world, right? We got people in Australia and Canada, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Uh, yeah, coming into work, it's it's probably the first job I've had where it's, you know, you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, you come in and get the shop opened up. You're like, oh, man, I want to go to work. You know, you're happy yeah. to go in. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Today's Saturday. We still work on Saturday and Sunday, but uh, right away I'm like, I love my job. <laughs> it's yeah, good. Yeah, we're working Saturday, just some quick quick wrap-ups because we had a, some heavy rain this week. So. Mm-hmm. So you have an unusual relationship with Command Center, which is what I manage and run. And we're only a few years old and your business is much more in-depth in experience than us. And so you have how many office staff? There's Jennifer and Brittany. So two and of them run it. And then Corpus is almost a million. So at what point do you think you needed two people in the office? Mm. 
Well, the office staff handles both both sides of the bridge, so they take okay. care of Rockport, Portland, and Corpus. Phenomenal. So they're basically their own call center. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, from eight to five, that's our little call center, and then yeah. command takes over. Like, I don't know. We sent out EDDMs for all three locations: five thousand, fifteen thousand EDDMs. So amazing. Command had, command had to pick up some phone calls there because it just stayed ringing. Yeah, no kidding. I actually had a call with your team yesterday, your leadership team there, to go over all of the things that they actually have experienced in the last few years that they're successful at and to learn from them and then to also find where things are falling through the cracks for my team and to be able to train mm -hmm. my team better. How has Command Center affected your position? Uh, Command Center is definitely helpful because they can handle those after hours calls. That mm -hmm. I think if command center wasn't there, that's a customer we'd miss. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the biggest things. Like when we built the shop up, we were like decided whether we were going to build a fence or we were going to get someone to build it. And they were like, we got other stuff. We'll just have someone to build it. We couldn't get people to answer the phone. We couldn't get estimates to show up. The ones that did show up, we couldn't get an estimate from. I had to call them multiple times. Mm -hmm. So I think just uh, with command center and the office staff in place to actually answer phone calls, return emails just sets us so far apart from everybody else. Yeah. Because a lot of what we're competing against with mowing, at least, is chucking a truck and, you know, he's out mowing all day with, then answers his phone. Yes, maybe, exactly. At the end of the day, but we got command center and the office staff, they're answering those phones while we're out there, you know, hooking and jabbing, getting it done. That's nice. So how many a, a day are you set up for estimates? Is eight your max? Uh, I could go a little bit over eight, but it really depends on what they are. Mm -hmm. Eight, I would say, is do four in the morning, four in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, we do eight to 12, four hour window, and then we do a one to five, four hour window. And I fit one. So we have an hour for each one. Yeah, so your window and is so big because the length of your territory, right? Yeah. If I had one out at Padre Island, out at the beach, and I had one out at Cal Island, I'm 45 minute drive between. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I remember when Mike and I worked alone and we worked mainly in one area that we made really dense. And I remember I put 25 on a schedule one day, but I was able to route them just like I would mow as just as if I had done a mowing route. And that was the only way he was able to do drive bys and then meetings. Yeah, like you said, the meetings can turn into an hour, hour and a half. So you, that's why you do a four hour window. Yeah, I'm on site minimum of 20 minutes. Uh, for me getting there, I don't like to just roll up and be like, hey, here's my card. I'm going to go do this. I want to mm -hmm. talk to the cost customers, sell what I need to sell. Um, you know, introduce myself, talk to them, something like, hey, nice truck. I like this, whatever, put them at ease. Talk to them about what their needs are, what they want to get done because that's where you find what you can upsell. Yeah. Do you do that for mowing as well, or do you just do drive-bys for mowing? Mowing's all OTP, unless it's yeah. something really weird. Okay. And then do you do any kind of door hangers with the weekly and bi-weekly price? We do. Uh, we did a wave of those for a while, but my guys do the the five. So they do their, yeah, five do their projects. Right. Yeah. They run their amount. Uh, project guys usually put a little bit more. Yeah. Do they have a yeah. problem with that? Because they're not making P for P when they're throwing those in. Do they get the concept of route density and that it will give them more P for P in the long mm -hmm. run? Yeah, we just restructured our mowing routes. And I talked to the guys about that. And I was like, hey, your routes are going to change next week. We're doing this one over here, this one over there. Then we're coming into the center point. He's mm -hmm. like, I like that. I like that. I like that. Because uh, I don't know how many zip codes we have. We have a ton. It's a lot. I remember four, us four, trying three. to book your calls according to your zip codes, and we epically failed on that. <laughs> yeah, it's like 7401 to 7419. It's just, there's a lot. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, but 413 and 414 are, that's the lion's share. Mm -hmm. That's so, more, the most dense routes you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where we're wrapping up the final end. So, I got those two guys zipping around over there Wednesdays and Thursdays. They're seeing trucks and then their density is great. So they get a lot of P for P out of it. Yeah, that's great. How did they feel about P for P 
I know that Ryan had his like rudimentary. He said, I think that he was doing P for P before he came to Augusta in some fashion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he was running a performance way before. Is that because he heard about it from Mike or he had thought that up and then just set it up on a spreadsheet to try to do that for his team? Uh, it was like an original thought. So mm -hmm. it was a very easy transition. It's basically, this is, it was kind of like a uh, day pay. Yeah. You have all these jobs, which is kind of what P4P breaks down to, but this is your, we're making a thousand dollars off these yards today. I'm going to pay you this much mm -hmm. to get it done at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and then we transitioned into P4P. Guys are big fans of P4P. And do they make pretty good? Yeah, they make very good P4P. Yeah, yeah. it's what we could never pay them without P4P. Yeah, I tell people how much my mommy guys make, and they're like, there's no way. Like, yeah, they do. And is it because they understand it? it? Yeah, we really push the first time cut. You know, you got your dollar fifty per man per minute. That's mm -hmm. uh I sell that to the customers. That's our time to come in and bring your property up to standards. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right now it's a little chaotic. We got to bring it up to our standards, and then that mm -hmm. price that we quoted you will be to maintain our standards. Mm -hmm. So they really take their time, get a good, solid, crisp edge in, you know, take their time, get everything done on the yard. So that when they come back, it's an easy maintain. They're not doing any little touch ups. Everything's just quick and easy in and out. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of people would have questions for you about that, that first initial mow. So then are the customers out there uh, timing them carefully or they just and the guys understanding I'm not, I might not make P for P on this, but this is the beginning of a way to make a lot of P for P. Yeah. They understand that's building the foundation for them to get P for P off of that recurring customer for hopefully forever. Yeah. So, Do they get um, any extra for doing that first mo? We adjust them so that they do get P for P off of it. Oh, that's cool. So like if we quote them, 0.5 budget hours, it takes them 1.2. We adjust that route for 1.2 so that we're not uh, taxing the employee. You know, he's, yes. Yes. he's not working for a base rate. Yeah. So they all have the app on their phones now, right? The P4P? Mm, they have P4P and Copilot, yes. And do you run their P4P every day or does Command Center? I run their P4P. Yeah. Okay. That's great. And do you have a, a group that just does the mowing and another crew that does the landscaping or is everybody interchangeable? I have maintenance crews and project crews. Okay. And then do you ever uh, route in different guys or do solo routes so they can make more P for P or do most of them like being together? Ma maintenance guys or my maintenance guys are all single man trucks. So okay. two, one, two one man trucks. They just mow on their own. They don't like uh, being with someone else. They like to do yeah. it, go out there, do it on their own. Yeah. What I found is that the high achievers, I had to actually in service autopilot, I would have like 20 mows for them, but I would only let them see when you dispatch, they only see so many. So I'd only let him see like 12. And then he would get to the 12th and he'd be like, it's only two o'clock. I want more, but I would have already prepared the route so I could give him like five more. He would still ask for more. He was such, and that is, that's Nick Reed who now owns his own location. Yeah. We, I got Marcelo and Joshua over here. They're both, both rock stars. Yeah. We're I blessed, met Josh. To have them. <laughs> yeah. He came here for training. I believe if we're talking about the same Josh, Josh. Oh, that's a different Josh. That's, different that's, my, Josh. Lead, that's my lead foreman. Blessed okay. to have Josh, Josh as well. Yeah, yeah. Josh and Joshua to keep them separated. Yeah. That's always crazy when they have double names, we end up making nicknames for them in some fashion. Yeah. We kind of just call them by last names. If we. Oh yeah. That's good. That's good. So do you have a family? I do. Yes. And uh, so uh, how did they feel about um, all these hours you work or do you keep it pretty structured to only the hours you're working? Um, I mean, there's a days that go wild, you know, you get an yeah. estimate and it's just insane. It takes me all day. So I try to get all my estimates out sent to the customer the same day that I met them in person. Yeah. So you don't see value of doing the estimate right from their driveway, or do you feel like you'd be there too long if you were figuring everything out? I'd be there too long for most of them. Yeah. Because you have all of this stuff to include like your irrigation and that, which we would not, we just have simple services. 
Yeah, I got a grading inside irrigation, a flower bed. Yeah. Tree yeah. install. I got to go price the trees from the nursery. Um, I got to price the irrigation. I got to get my square footage for the grading and sod. Mm -hmm. and I put all that in, put my hours together, give them a price. And then it was the flower beds or give them a little design, mm -hmm. show what the layout's going to look like on their plants, which so works really goal, well. Your goal is to have them all done by the end of the day, if you can. That's the plan. Yeah. So even if you couldn't, your estimates as Augusta and Augusta brand are still faster than anybody else's, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Even if I took like three days, which I rarely ever happens unless it's just something I have to make multiple. It's something weird mm -hmm. usually take where I have to call suppliers and get pricing. And I'm at the mercy of them sending me an email. Yeah. So, the only time. so back to your family. They know there's, um, do, do they have like the promise that you've given them that later on it'll be a little better? Or do they feel like you are conscientious enough to try to be home by five? If you have an estimate that's unusual and the customer can't meet you till five or six, do you do those? And especially during spring season, uh, do they have any issue with that? No, my, well, my wife's a store manager for Dillard's, so she has her winter rush, you know, Christmas yes. time. So yes. it's just, it's just mine happens this time of year. Hers happens that time of year. Yeah. So, so it hasn't hurt your relationship at all. No, it's a, it, there's an understanding cause we both have it just different forms. Yeah, for sure. Um, so wrapping up, I would love to hear, um, do you have for your five year, 10 year goal to own your own location? Or are you just happy doing this? I'm happy doing this. Yeah, you don't really have a desire to have to do your own thing. No, it's, I have no plans of moving, and mm -hmm. I'd rather help uh, help Ryan grow this here. Mm -hmm. Is there a limit to what you're going to try to grow it to before you start another one? See how it works. Yeah, you know how some they they say I'll go to a million, then I'll start another one, or I'll go to three million, which is what we're going to try to do at Bellingham and then just stay at that. So, so if you, yes. if you get your whole area, you're going to easily be able to get up to that. You think? Yeah. It's more, we're trying to grow up into different areas. Mm -hmm. It's Corpus is very weird. It's huge by square mileage. Mm -hmm. And there's areas that kind of consider themselves their own town, but they're not. Okay. So we're trying to grow into that one. Cause it's, there's the bulk of the city, the South side, then there's the beach. And then you run into all your refineries, your industrial, and mm -hmm. then there's another town above that. It's still Corpus. Okay. It's kind of separated because you run through all that industrial. Yeah. So we're trying to push up there, get that where we, that would be the next location. Mm -hmm. What would uh, you say about coming to the conference and the summit that was beneficial to you? Uh, it's just meeting other people, picking their minds, seeing what they deal with, uh, different points of view. Sometimes you can have uh, blinders on, you know, you get mm -hmm. hyper focused in your area and they come in with better ideas, you know, mm -hmm. you go to conference, you learn from different people, different perspectives, and then you go out after have some dinner with them, hang out at their Airbnb. And, you know, it's always talk about works the way it goes, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're like, Hey, we're doing this. Wow. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So did you go into any WhatsApp groups or any connection after that really has been a good relationship that you've upkept? Uh, it's just the Augusta Nation group. I talked to a lot of people in there mm -hmm. and there's a few uh, scattered about that I talked to. And do you participate well, much in the Facebook? Yeah, I try to answer questions when I can, put some stuff out there. Mm -hmm. The wins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things do you listen to and really intake throughout your day when you're driving or when you're not working that, that really make you the person you are? Uh, when I'm driving, it's audibles or podcasts, um, occasionally music, but mostly it's, it's audibles. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason you do that? Is it because you feel like uh, you want to keep growing or are you pretty happy with where you are? It's the growth of a very, I want to know everything. Yeah. So yeah. it's like read, I read, I read actual physical books. You know, yeah. When I get home at night, I read those before bed. Um, I read them in my downtime. I've, mm -hmm. I've always read. I love reading books. I love watching documentaries. 
the, the, you know, how it's made, how this works. And yeah. Then every time it's the, it's the knowledge paradox. The more you learn, the more you understand, you don't know anything. So, yeah. So what kind of books do you listen to? Mostly business, investing, real estate? Um, audible wise is mostly business and mm -hmm. like a personal growth type books, <clears throat> anything from like, uh, David Goggins, Jocko, mm -hmm. um, Zig Ziglar. Yeah. I like, I like Zig. Zig's good. Yeah. Things like that. Sales, sales stuff, just to keep it in your head mm -hmm. I'm driving around doing sales. If I'm hearing it over there, it's just it's still there. Yeah. Absorbing That's it. But, uh, like I actually sit down and read up for history books. Mm -hmm. Do you have an audible for your team? Yes, we do. And do your guys really participate at all? They listen. It's more the mowing crew. Yeah. Use it than the project guys. Project guys have to communicate. You know, they're running skid steers and spotting them. They, right. They can't really have AirPods in their ears. Yeah. Was it hard to get your guys to buy into that? Or do they see the growth of the company and kind of want to be a part of that? Yeah, it's just setting an example and showing that we do it. Give them a book of the month. You know, I took that from the belly net shop. Yeah, that. Or the actually command center, you had it up there on the, the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ryan gave us a book. I got it right here. Your next five moves. So you put yeah. that on the crew to read. Yep. So yeah, we put it out there and then uh, the foreman, I give a book to. I'll go buy a book for him. Something simple, separate, so separate from the guys. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. uh, when I talk to him, I talk to him every day before the job when they mm -hmm. come back but at the end of the week i'll sit down and talk with them about do you the go to every job to show them what they need to do for the day or like at the beginning of a project i don't go to every job um bigger ones i'll go out to just to show my face or mm -hmm. some customers you kind of just have to go out there and show your face but yeah for the most part my guys i give them their uh scope of work give them the material list because mm -hmm. they get the video they get the pictures they get everything yeah. And just for those listening, how do they get a video? Like, how does that process go? So when I meet a customer for an estimate, I go in, I take all my pictures with measurements. I load them up into a notes app mm -hmm. and then I'll shoot a separate video where I'll walk around. Hey, this is Joe. I'm over at this address. This is today's date. I'll show it on my Apple watch date and time. Mm -hmm. It covers us on legal side as well. And then uh, I'll walk through. These are the line. This is access to the properties where you can park. This is, there's alternate access to the back driveway here, whatever it is, how they can get into the property. Like we're going to have to take this fence panel out to get a skid steer in. Um, so it's for the customer and for the crew as well. So I'm explaining yeah. the work to the customer and selling the job more. Mm -hmm. but also so the crew understands what they're doing, their work area. I'm like our line items would be grading the side, irrigation install and a rock bed over on the right side and explain how we're going to take this all out. We're going to move all the grass, weeds, dirt, rocks, debris, clear all of that out. We're going to bring in reflect, uh, fresh, clean fill material. We're going to apply that down. We're going to grade that out, give you a proper slope. And then we'll apply whatever sod it is, you know, floor tan or Bermuda. Mm -hmm. Explain all that. So the guys have it lined out step by step what to do. And do you actually always send the customer the video or is it just there you have it if there's an issue? I send it to them always. Seriously? Yep. I load it all into a Google drive pictures with the measurements and the video. Um, and then I send them a Google drive link and then a request for review. Impressive. So they know exactly what the crew sees and mm -hmm. if they need anything adjusted, it would be a work order change and they know that. And the customer knows that. Yeah. We run into the, well, I want this. And then my guy's like, that's not my scope. The video says this. Sweet. He's like, I come to do this work. Anything outside of that, we have to get a change order it has to go through the office. So. I love that. Yeah. I think a lot of people will learn from what you shared today and implement some of those things. I know for me, after talking to your team yesterday, I learned so much. And then I was able to, you know, at a certain point, somebody can't use a command center for full services. So we were able to see what is the best and the best services for somebody this big. And what does that company need to manage? And then how we can get better uh, always trying to think of the big scale, thinking of 500 franchisees. Can we do that for them? And it's been a real struggle for um, us with your team because you've already got systems in place that have worked for you for your one company. Yeah, we're kind of kind of got our own little stuff. It creates confusion for y'all. 
We're working with you. That's what that call yeah. was about yesterday. So hopefully it'll get better. <laughs> Did you hear yeah, anything about our call? Yeah, I heard a list. Just changing kind of verbiage that we use. It's, you all use different words, you know. Yes. Like you, call yes. It, like you say drive-by, we say won't be home. Yes, exactly. Things like that. And then if I said that to my team, I would get it. But I don't know that each of them would just automatically assume that's a drive-by. Yeah, it's... It is the same, essentially, but it is. We, yeah, tell we don't really do. We have more drive by. better access through satellite than y'all do. We don't have, you know, however huge those trees are you have. Yeah. So we get pretty good satellite access to almost every yard. So and that's we're why flat. we're able to do OTP for you so well. Yeah, our elevation is non-existent. We're coastal, so it's just flat. Sweet. We don't have to worry about, you know, is this going to be like a insane slope that they can't cut? Mm -hmm. It's just flat. That's so cool. our OTP is a lot easier. And yeah. We talked about that when I went up to do uh, the franchisee training. Mm -hmm. When we got there, Ryan's like, yeah, see, we talked about OTPs. And I was talking, he was talking to Mike about it. And he's like, I don't know how people can't do OTPs. And he's like, then I came to Washington. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, now I understand. Like, these yards are like, just crazy. Some of them, you can't even see the grass. There's so many trees. Yeah, it's a, it's a different world up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Do you have a, a favorite quote or one that kind of sustains you or that you run through your mind all the time that you want to share? Yeah, it's a, it's a John Maxwell quote. Mm -hmm. It's a, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'll have to write that on a sign so I can see it myself and put it in my notes app. Yeah, it's a good one. It keeps a, kind of keeps you accountable as a leader that, you know, you need to know what's going on. You need to show them what's going on and you have to live it and breathe it. If you expect mm -hmm. the people you're leading to do the mm -hmm. same. Do you have team meetings um, weekly in the morning, like where you share a little more inspirational kind of thing, or is it just everybody standing up and we do a quick meeting and then off we go? Yeah, it's Monday mornings. I have a longer meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll come in. I'll find something that I picked up throughout the week off of YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. five to 10 minute video. I'll put it on the TV. I'll sit here in the office, watch the video. I'll talk to them, tell them what's going on about it, what they think about it. They know I'm going to pick somebody randomly. Like, yeah. hey, what do you think about it? And he's like, oh, oh, oh. So they yeah. know they have to pay attention to it. Yeah. Do you and, do uh, that on yellow slips too? Do you make them talk about their yellow slips in front of everyone? Yeah. If we have a, well, that's a day to day thing. I don't think <laughs> that if there's an issue, it's addressed that morning or that yeah. afternoon when they get back. Have they become better speakers because you kind of forced them into that position? Yeah, I think all my guys do a pretty good job talking. Yeah. They're more comfortable speaking. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And then I then I go out to jobs and, you know, I'll show them. I don't really say, hey, watch me. This is how you do it. But they yeah. just see it. Yeah. See it happen. They're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, you don't need to be scared of a customer. Mm -hmm. Like One, they called us and they want us there. We're not cold calling these people. Right. They exactly. have a service. We provide a service. Right. Just go there, be friendly, shake their hand, and then you steer it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't let them lead you. Yeah. So if there's anything that you would share with somebody that is a GM and working under someone that may not be a good boss or are a good boss, how would you um, recommend that they handle themselves under a leader like any leader uh, to run a location as a GM? Well, as a GM, the way I look at it, my well, main job is to, how do I put it? My main thing I want to do is to take away work from Ryan. Okay. Right. So a GM should be able to handle it that you not have to call the owner. Mm -hmm. like you should be able to run your career. Anything that comes into like financials and stuff like that, then yes, obviously. But that's what the owner should be dealing with. You should mm -hmm. want financials, real estate, things like that. Um, all my guys hiring, firing, uh, trucks breaking down, routes, jobs, estimates, all that. The GM should be able mm -hmm. to take care of that. It's uh, run your little location, run your guys, you know, build that family, family feeling. Mm -hmm. Always take care of your guys. Always tell them that you appreciate them. Wow. I, I, got, I got a guy. He's probably worked for every company in town. And then when we hired him, they were like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And we kind of 
me and Ryan kind of share that thing. We have pride. Like, hey, everybody else kicked this guy away, but he, yeah. found, a home, he found a home here. Yeah. So so we're doing something better. You know, it gives you that little chip on your shoulder. But, uh, yeah, they left. I was like, hey, I appreciate all the hard work today. I know you guys had a grueling one. He's like, yeah. he said he said that uh, he, really, he really appreciates that, you know, mm. really sticks with him because nobody else has ever thanked him for his work. Wow. Probably nobody's ever given him business cards either. Yeah. Yeah. They get business cards to get a card, a credit card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of trust in somebody from the get. Yeah. I tell them from the jump, it's uh, the quickest way to lose your job here is for me not to be able to trust you. Yeah. And do you trust until there's a reason not to, or are you skeptical right from the beginning? I trust until proven differently. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, that it's makes them feel it. really welcome. Mike always says, I'd rather celebrate when they come than celebrate when they leave. I'd rather not even acknowledge when mm -hmm. they move on because we're celebrating the people that are going to work with us. Yeah, be slow to hire and quick to fire. Yeah, 100%. Tell them all the, tell them all the time they're handpicked. They're here for a reason. Yeah. Anytime, anytime someone we have to let someone go, it's like, well, you notice we're a lighter one person. Yeah. You didn't live up to the standards that you all live up to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate having you as a part of Augusta Nation. I know that when somebody of your caliber comes in, that everybody they touch and affect and lead is is going to be made better. And therefore, Augusta and the brand will be better. And I have no words to express my appreciation for that. Well, I appreciate that. I'm definitely happy to be part of the Yellow Army over here. So <laughs> That's a great way to look at it. Yeah, in Augusta Nation. Yeah, Augusta Nation for taking it over. So <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. All right. Well, I'll let you go for today. I'm so excited to share this with everyone and they can learn from all the amazing things and that you have in place there. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate the opportunity to talk. Yeah. All right. You have a wonderful day. All right, you too, Liz. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah, bye.